I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Edward Mancata, the co-founder and CEO of Blockfolio. Edward, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Uh, thanks for having me, Ashton. You're very welcome. I'd love it if you could start with a basic explanation for those who aren't familiar with Blockfolio. What exactly is Blockfolio and how does it make it easier to track your digital assets? Uh, Blockfolio is a, um, I'd say we're, we're the, the number one portfolio tracking app, uh, mobile portfolio tracking app for the cryptocurrency space. So we're, we're basically, we built this product that's very easy for you to, uh, you know, input what your token positions or your uh, crypto investments might be, uh, you know, across uh, any number of, of exchanges and uh, be able to instantly get price information and, and uh, you know, kind of within the app, you know, it sort of spits out, like the simplified spits out what your portfolio balance is, no matter mm -hmm. how many different coins you hold, no matter how many different exchanges you, you know, hold cryptocurrencies on. Great. And do you guys have integrations and APIs that make it easier than having to type in decimals of specific cryptocurrencies that you have? Because I know it can get very tedious. Yeah, we do. So yeah, we launched, we launched that feature uh, a while back. We have, uh, uh, you know, the ability to, con you know, basically through API, API keys, you can auto sync your portfolio. Um, you know, we support like most of the major exchanges. That way you don't have to manually input trades anymore. Mm -hmm. And Blockfolio now has 5 million downloads. So congratulations to that. That's amazing. Um, what would you say has been the key to keeping your team organized and scaled during these times of growth? So we're actually close to 6 million now. People oh. just don't know it yet. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we pick up, I don't know, anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 organic downloads every day. Um, you know, it's all been word of mouth organic growth. Um, there are a few reasons, you know, for that. And then when we were first market, we were in the first products that was, you know, tracking all cryptocurrencies across all exchanges. And to give you an idea of like how wide we went, you know, we're directly connected and pulling price feeds from over 300 exchanges. And we support uh, well over 8,000 cryptocurrencies on our platform. Wow. So, that's great. And well, one of the reasons that a lot of people I think first heard of Blockfolio was during the 2017 bull run, there was a lot of memes about people not being able to stop checking their Blockfolio uh, trackers because the prices were going up so quickly. Um, you know, do you honestly think that the memes have played a role in the growth and the adoption of Blockfolio? Yeah, I think it, it actually it actually has like our social media like uh, this referencing Blockfolio on social media has driven a lot of traffic to us. Um, you know whether it's like there's you know a number of hilarious memes that were coming out in 2017, 2018 that were, uh, um, you know I think I think we were sort of the right product at the right time, you know, and captured sort of like a little bit of the zeitgeist. Uh, even the name Blockfolio, you know, when somebody hears it, if they know even just a, a small amount of about crypto, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the name Blockfolio, they instantly know what our app does, right? So Yeah, definitely. And, you know, with all these downloads, uh, a lot of people probably downloaded it during the 2017, 2018 bull run. Um, at, at the same time, a lot of people lose interest in cryptocurrency when it starts going down. Um, so could you talk a little bit about how important it is for the act active monthly user metrics and how do you grow your base and do you measure your KPIs based on active users? So, yeah, I think this kind of goes back to just being a believer in crypto, right? Because this, this entire industry has gone through these like boom and bust cycles multiple times now, right? And, uh, you know, in 2015, when we launched Blockfolio, we saw a number of like well-funded startups that had to shut down, right? And, yeah. uh, and, and and a lot of it is, is because, you know, so much of the interest in the crypto space, whether it's, uh, you know, investment capital um, um, or users, whatever it might be, is, is really driven by the price, right? And, uh, uh, you know, when things are roaring and Bitcoin's near $20,000, everybody's investing uh, buying crypto, people are investing in startups, and, and then we go through these two or three year long stretches where, um, uh, you know, these sort of very, you know, devastating bear cycles, I would say. Um, and for Blockfolio, like we've always been fairly, you know, conservative about our fiscal management. 
Uh, also, another another kind of component to it is during you know during the bear cycles, um, you don't really get much viral growth. There's not high viral coefficient. You know, obviously, people share block folio uh, a lot when they're making 10% every two weeks. <laughs> you know, through their yeah. investments in crypto. Uh, in the bear markets, like we we tried to kind of look at it differently. We try to you know align ourselves well with other strong brands in the ecosystem. Try to do partnerships. Uh, kind of really cement our brand, you know, and do a lot of, you know, the busy work in building uh, in anticipation for the needs that, that we anticipate, in anticipation for the needs that we see coming, you know, in the next big bull cycle. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, as far as uh, KPIs go, you know, just to be totally transparent, uh, from 2018 to uh, probably Q4 of 2019, you know, we just saw a steady decline in uh, daily active users and monthly active users, but this is probably not much different than you know, any major exchange in the crypto ecosystem or any other, you know, really widely used product in crypto. Definitely. And just as it's easy to make money in crypto during the bull run when everything's going up, uh, it is easy to grow your company. And in those bear cycles, when the, you know, the real hardworking companies put their heads down and focus on, f you know, making it to the next cycle and being the top uh, in their industry when that next bull cycle hits. I think that's what really differentiates. Um, and one of the ways that Blockfolio has differentiated is with this Blockfolio signal function. Can you talk a little bit about signal and how it adds value to the tracking? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously price tracking is sort of like our bread and butter, what people come to the app for, you know, but just tracking prices isn't, isn't the only consideration when making investments. And then uh, we, we realized there was a lot of misinformation uh, in the crypto ecosystem. Uh, there's a lot of people scamming uh, uh, people over Telegram groups or Slack channels. And we saw a need for a direct line of communication that was coming uh, uh, from token team leadership. And so we decided to build a sort of um, uh, updating feed uh, where token teams can broadcast the latest updates and developments of, uh, you know, that are happening in their protocols. And meanwhile, our users can get information that they trust directly, you know, verifiable from the source. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we thought it was just a win for the entire ecosystem you know, to have something like this available. Yeah, no, it's it's actually a really great feature. And to get updates directly from them and trust uh, that you know it's real, it's verified block by Blockfolio is great because there's definitely a lot of impersonating Twitter accounts and impersonating Slack groups and all of these. Uh, you always have to be cautious. So uh, thank you for doing that. And, you know, on the top of the Blockfolio website, it mentions, you know, this is a 100% free application. Anybody can go download it right now. And that's part of the reason why you've had such great viral growth. But I guess my question for the investors that are watching is, you know, is there a revenue generation model? If the users aren't paying, how are you generating uh, money and creating a sustainable company? So, yeah, so people don't realize that we're, we actually do generate a decent amount of revenue of Blockfolio. And to give you a little bit of insight into it, you know, um, on a monthly basis in Q1 of this year, we did well over 100 million page impressions in Blockfolio per month, right? Wow. We actually are, uh, you know, if you look at total aggregate of page impressions, we actually topped coin market cap uh, in I think every month this quarter in Q1, right? Wow. Uh, and that's something a lot of people don't realize. And uh, I'd say last year we started kind of working with token projects and trying to figure out finding ways to, to offer them digital marketing or ways for them to kind of get visibility in, in front of um, Blockfolio users. We've come up with a number of different campaigns. Some of them aren't really um, available to US customers, so you might not have seen them. But for instance, uh, you know, Solana recently did a uh, coin list reverse Dutch auction, uh, and we made this sort of countdown clock available into something like 400,000 portfolios internationally, you know, we excluded, we geofenced out the US. And uh, that would be an example of like a digital marketing, like a, you know, visibility uh, campaign that we that we ran uh, on the platform. Uh, we also, you know, we have a couple other different ones, but um, um, I would say you, you might have also seen banner ads showing up on the chart pages. We, we had our uh, sort of, we piloted that program, our inaugural campaign, marketing campaign with the banner ads was back in November. Uh, when we help uh, MakerDAO uh, push the launch of the multi-collateral die, mm -hmm. right? So we're, you know, we're just kind of starting to explore more and more um, um, 
you know, how we want to put ads and, and bring visibility to quality projects in the ecosystem and put them in front of our users. Um, you know, it's something I'm very kind of um, particular about. I'd like to think of us less like a, a billboard and more like a very prestigious music venue that has this amazing mm -hmm. audience and we have like these great acts that we want to put in front of them. Yeah. So we're always kind of like keeping our eyes out for, you know, uh, great projects in the ecosystem and, and trying to see if we can find ways to support them. Mm -hmm. That's great to know. And that's very impressive to know that, you know, you're on par and even above coin market cap. And, you know, coin market cap was recently bought by Binance for 400 million, somewhere around there. Um, <laughs> it, and because of their user base and the amount of impressions that they're getting, you know, it's become one of the most popular sites. Did you foresee, do you foresee in the future something similar may be happening where Binance or another large conglomerate may approach Blockfolio uh, to, to buy it? Um, to be honest, we get approached probably like once every six or eight months. <laughs> like it happens pretty frequently. Yeah. Right. And I think, uh, you know, there might be a time in the future where we're interested in selling the company. But I think, I, I just think we have like a, a great product and a lot of room to grow. Um, you know, I mean, uh, and and like I said, I, I see this as like a very responsible gatekeepers to uh, this ecosystem where, you know, people don't realize like trust is something that's really important. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's something that, you know, we were, were fortunate that, that it was always like a priority of portfolio. Definitely. And you're right. There's so, there is a long way to go. And we are very early in the scope of the entire cryptocurrency industry. So I guess looking forward, I'd love to know, is there any development roadmap uh, features and functions that users can be looking forward to? Uh, yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. What do you think is the most logical thing that we do from where we're at? If you had a guess, just a random um, just I'm, that's a tough question. I, you know, it already has great functions with the notifications, the push notifications coming in and, and the portfolio trackers, but I'm not sure exactly how you could get more people on uh, besides adding more functions, making more partnerships somehow. Yeah, like we're, we're you know, we, we're always looking, you know, for, for, for things to do. I think, uh, um, let's just put it this way, I wouldn't be surprised if in the, in the future you see a Blockfolio branded exchange coming. Mm, very interesting. Yeah, and uh, I was thinking that, you know, coin market cap, uh, all these other news sites and aggregators have the buy Bitcoin button, buy Ethereum button, usually using referrals to gain more traction. But, you know, expanding beyond there, I could definitely foresee people are already looking at their prices there. Why go to the exchange to trade a coin when you're already on Blockfolio? So that's very interesting. Exactly. We're just going to continue to build out the suite of services uh, to keep people in our app and, and uh, you know, uh, keep them happy and, uh, and uh, provide them, you know, best pricing information, you know, the, the best uh, financial information, direct news updates from uh, token projects, and, and maybe the ability to trade. So. Hmm. Very exciting, Edward. Well, if, is there a Blockfolio community that people can reach out, join, or follow along with these development roadmaps for when they come out? Uh, yeah, so we, we have uh, just like a, a general um, Telegram community. You know, you can access it through the Blockfolio app and, you know, in, in the in sort of the, what's it called, the uh, um, kind of near the settings, you have like, you know, the ability to go to, to our different social media channels. Um, or, you know, you can access it through www.blockfolio.com and, and the, you know, towards the bottom of the page, there's ways to, to find our, our, our uh, Telegram community there. Awesome. Well, I'll leave the links to the Blockfolio app and the communities in the description box below for the viewers. And that's all the time that we have for the interview, but I really appreciate you coming on and I'm looking forward to seeing the future of Blockfolio's growth because I know that there are great times ahead and I'm wishing you all the best with that. And let's follow up in the near future, Edward. Thanks so much for your time, Ashley.